Welcome back, everybody. Kathy Arbor here, and welcome to my studio. So it's fall, and Halloween's not too far. So I thought it'd be kind of cute to do a little uh, witch with her cat walking through a forest. That way we get both um, the fall leaves and all that stuff. <laughs> I love fall. Um, just thought I'd show you what we did on Tuesday if you're interested in uh, watercolor. And it's extremely easy and very confidence building way of doing leaves. So anybody, whatever level you are, this is a really awesome way, relaxing to do fall leaves and then really wow yourself in the end. So there is a, uh, I'll try and put a link up in the corner over here after I'm done the stream and, uh, or you can just go on my main channel page and it was uh, the last video that I did. All right. So I have my book here. And I thought I would do it on this page. Maybe, let's see, take you out a little bit. So you can see what I'm doing. I think that's good. So to, to start off with, uh, I want to gesso this page. And this is just file folders that are glued together to make an accordion style uh, book. These are all um, experiments really of trying different things in my journal. So this is a base, gonna be a homemade journal basically. Um, so where you start, you can sketch, you can try different methods of, uh, painting different styles. Maybe you're, you want to try out different color combinations, that type of thing. Great place to do it is in your journal. If you don't have a a uh, regular journal, just get some old file folders, put some gesso on and dry it and then uh, use those. The file folders are great because they, they're they strong. They don't wrinkle, they don't buckle. They'll take a lot of uh, wet medium. And they're not precious, especially if they're uh, old file folders where you've used them for something else, maybe paperwork or whatever. And you were going to throw them out. Well, why not use them? You could also use um, cardstock if you wanted to. That would work too. You just make sure you uh, put a little bit of gesso on them. And that, that's just so that the paint that you'll put on them later won't uh, instantly go into your paper. And uh, if you so happen to want to glaze or something like that, it's very difficult to do that on uh, untreated paper. So now all I'm going to do is dry that and I don't put two coats on just one is good enough that will help my um, paint move better with my brush so I'm just going to heat this up get it dry and while I'm drying why don't you get your stuff together and uh, paint along with me I have an actual uh, 
where did I put it? I have, oh, here it is. I have a traceable for all my members, and you can get that on the, the uh, comments community page. And if you're a Patreon member, you can find it. I put it up there also. So download it and uh, get your page ready and paint along. So you want your page good and dry because we're going to be putting quite a bit of, of uh, paint on these. So quite a few layers. So you don't want it to be sopping wet. So I thought, uh, I want to stick to the fall colors. So browns and golds, yellows, oranges, reds, that type of thing. And then we'll do her in the traditional black outfit with the black cat. She'll stand out then. Now, there's many different types of trees you can put in your forest. Um, you could do them as far as what you have in your area. Uh, here we have a lot of maples and um, actually a lot of uh, birch trees here. So I may put a few of those in. I'm just going to put some deli wrap paper in there so I don't end up painting on one of my other paintings. That. And then, hey Carol, good to see you. So we're going to do a background first and I'm going to, I'm going to go more or less um, either at dusk or dawn, whatever you want to, could be dusk because it's going to be kind of Halloween-ish. <laughs> you don't even have to put this girl in, you could just do the forest if you want. Um, I'm just going to get a bunch of paint. Add these out from the last time. So I may as well use them. I'll put them up here. So this, if you don't want, like, some people don't like Halloween. So if you don't like Halloween, you could uh, just put take the hat off of her. Change it up. Maybe a dog instead of a cat. Make it yours. So I like to use these coffee lids just because I can peel the paint off of them. That way I'm not having to buy anything and I'm all about uh, use what you got. And I'm very frugal. <laughs> just, I um don't like to buy things that I can uh, either make out, out of stuff that I already have. I find a lot of um, craft items basically are basically art supplies that they're trying to break into the art uh, industry. And you probably already have it in your stash of uh, paint or whatever it is you have. So why not use it? Might be just a bit of uh, color mixing that you might have to do, but it saves you some money. And then when you do need something uh, that you don't have, you've got the money there. 
Um, I'm not a collector, so I don't like to collect full sets. I like to use what I have. So this, I want kind of um, a glowy look to the background. So more or less yellows and maybe some golds. Let's see, this one's almost empty and it's coming yellow. You're the same way. Yeah, add a country bonnet or whatever you want to do. I'm all about use what you have. And you can all you don't need to um, stick to my printouts that I have for you. Change them up. There's some white. You could use gesso too. Actually, I should use gesso. I find that um, any acrylic artist grade ends up being shiny when it's fully dry. And when you're putting it into a journal, it tends to stick. So you either have to rub wax on it or put a finish of some sort. So if you're wanting a white and you run out like I have, uh, just use regular gesso. It'll do the same thing. So I'm going to make a background and I want it kind of light in the center here and then darkening out to the sides. And down here is going to be the ground level. So I'm going to need a little bit of this straw color. And... Maybe a little bit of brown. Dark brown. Let's see. Dark burnt umber will do. And I like when I'm doing stuff in my journals or um, experimenting, I tend to use craft paint because it's a whole lot cheaper <laughs> than uh, artist grade. And I have no problem using it. Uh, when I start canvases, though, I do use the, the artist grade. So then it's uh, archival, and um, especially if you're doing commissions, you want to make sure that they're um, archival. So I, ha I just use, when I'm using acrylics, I don't, I'm not too fussy. Um, I usually get, these are the my favorite, I think, or the Simply Simmons I also like. I've tried many different ones, but I always seem to go back to these. This is just a plaid. Um, what was it? Donna Dewberry. And I, I like using her stuff. So I'm just going to mix a color. And I want it fairly light. I don't want it too dark. So a nice kind of glowy light yellow. I'm going to start up here and I'm just going to paint right across for now. You can add white as you go. You can um, vary the uh, colors in your background because it's, a lot of this is going to be uh, hidden by all the other layers of trees and bushes and whatnot. And a lot of times it looks a little more interesting when you're, you've got a bit of uh, variation in color. Maybe a little bit more lighter up there. Usually your sky is a little bit lighter on the top part. So I'm just going to, it's kind of dawn, eh? So then we got, I'm going to need a little bit more. Don't really want to use the acrylic um, artist grade because I know it's going to stick. 
right in here. I want it a little bit lighter. It's kind of where the sun is coming up or setting, whatever. I'm going to turn the top lights off. I can see it glaring at you. There. A little better. Paper towels. You want to squeeze out as much of the uh, water out of your brush. Let's see, a little bit more of that just plain white on there. It's where the uh, sun is going down, so it'll be a little brighter. All right. And then, um, best when you're doing uh, landscapes, try not to put your horizon line in the middle. Have it down or up a little bit. So now I want to do a base coat of my landscape. So I think it's going to be a little more on the umber side. With some yellow in there. Kind of a muddy color, actually. So we're going to just put it right in there. Now, this is going to be in the woods forest. So I'm going to have a little bit more dark around the edges because a lot of the trees and bushes are going to be in there. And I'm just mixing on my page. Not worried about brush marks because most of this is going to be covered in some sort of brush or trees or whatever. So you can just play with it. A lot of times I like to mix on the page. You just you get some really nice gradation especially uh, organically, you'll find there's a lot more um, eh, slight colors, especially wood. There's greens and that type of thing. More white. I'm just trying to get the All the grain of the paper covered. There we go. Little more on there. Okay, so. I do want a bit of a difference to know as far as where the bush area is and the pathway. So I'm going to add a little bit more dark in certain areas and kind of show where the uh, pathway is going. So it's going to be a little lighter on the top part here where the sun is. Maybe the forest ends there. That could be. And I'm just going to go back and forth. Like that. Just like that. A little bit more on the top. Where it would be a little lighter. Sun's coming out there, so let's make that a little bit like that. Okay. 
Clean the brush. There. All right. So there's our base of our you're pl you're painting along awesome oh you're gonna use the gouache oh i've got to use more gouache I got it but i just don't go to it so now the fun part now you could use a these are flats or you could use a round i like flats because you can use them in different ways um now I'm going to have a bunch of trees, but I want to start out at the back of the forest. So atmosphere, uh, when you're looking into a forest like this, maybe it's a little misty or mountains, that type of thing. The farther away it is, the lighter it is. And as it comes towards you, it darkens. So um, the trees, you're not going to notice a whole lot of detail on them you'll probably have to do them more in a mm, a light because we are using yellow in here more on the taupey side I guess you could say grayish or a warm gray would do also so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this basically this color of the yellow, the dark umber, and the white, and I'm going to make kind of a muddy looking color, almost like this, but a little more, uh, I'm going to make a fair amount of it because there's going to be a fair amount of trees. So make enough that you don't have to make up too many batches because there will be a difference because it's very difficult to get the exact same color as you made before. Okay. And I'll put a little more. Okay. So it's kind of a kind of a putty color, I guess you could say. So I'm going to start at the back so very, right along the edge of the uh, horizon line you'll have a bunch and they'll be in different widths too some there'll be saplings so you might want to use a smaller round brush for that if you if you like and don't make them all straight especially in a woods because in the woods they're all different they're leaning they're some of them are broken some you know they're all different so and we're just going to put a few in and i'm going to take them right up off the page on the top and then you can widen them too make some a little wider than others Now, they do get a little wider on the bottom, so just remember that. And I'm just doing the trunks. Not, I'm not worried about the uh, side limbs yet. Just do the trunks. And usually there's a lot more of the small ones, like narrow ones, depending on, you know, how far away they are. So put a bunch of those in. I'm going to get actually my round brush to play with that. Where did I put it? Okay, so we'll just use a round brush. You don't really have to be too worried about 
if they're um, very uh, solid or not, because like I said, we're going to be putting a whole lot of these in. So thin and Do a whole bunch. It's a forest, so it's going to be quite a few. We'll be putting the larger ones in front of these, so. It may look a little strange when you're first doing this, but trust me. It'll work out. Okay, and now I'm going to add a little bit more of that brown to that mix. So now we're going to go a step towards us. So it'll be a little bit darker. And some of these will be a little on the wider side too. So if you want, you want them to put start down further too, not on the on the horizon line. I'm just using my round brush here for these smaller ones. You can widen some of them widen out a little bit on the bottom. So just do a bunch of one size and then switch to a little thicker. And there'd be some small ones too, little saplings. So you can put those in. And I'm still not worried about the side limbs. Like that. A little bit thicker on the bottom, maybe. There might be some that are just um, a little bit shorter because they're they're new, so they're not quite. They're just starting to grow. Put some of them in. Just keep doing it. I know it looks kind of crazy, but there's a method to my madness. Comes down there. And then as we go further, now we can start doing um, even darker. So I added a, quite a bit more. To that mix and now we want to put 
some of our main trees in. So I'm going to have a big one in here. And I'm going right over top of these. And I want it fairly thick. This one I'm going to bring right up. Now some of this paint is mixing, but that's good. We can actually use that to our advantage. And let's see, let's put one right in here. So when they're along the pathway, maybe the pathway has been worn down into a, a groove like a hollow. Sometimes the roots will follow that hollow. This one's going to have a bit of a lean to it. I'm going to make this one fairly big thick but I'm still just concentrating on the main trunk of the tree I'm not doing the side ones yet Okay. And then add a little bit more of that brown. Now I've got just the plain brown, so I'm going to put a real thick one in here. I'm just just using the the uh, pure dark umber. And they're not all straight either. They're, sometimes they have lumps and bumps and whatnot. Now when they get closer to you, you'll will notice the uh, roots. So they, they kind of, um, depending on how they, how they uh, are formed or if the dirt's high or you'll have uh, a bunch of roots along the ground. So you can put some of those in, kind of like an octopus when you're making an octopus. Let me uh, let me put the light up a little bit for you. It's kind of hard to see it. Hey Dot, the notifications aren't working. Hi. So, oh geez. Well, no surprise there. Now uh, this this one's. I think I'm gonna make some roots in here. it's a little closer to me.
Okay. So there's one. Now let's see. I think I will put a big one right in here. Nice big one. And maybe we'll have it. Wine. Bit of a Y in it. Maybe it got broke from a storm. These are just the base coats. I'm gonna do a lot more to these. So don't get discouraged yet. There's always ugly um, stages of your painting. I know a lot of people tend to, especially um, people that are just starting, they forget about that. And they go, I don't like this. It'll look cute. Um, maybe we'll have, let's see, maybe we'll have, I'm going to put another one in here, but it's kind of behind it. So this one, it's just going to show a little bit. I'm going to actually use a little bit of this lighter color. Just going to go beside this one. And then bring out the roots. like that and then maybe one in here a little bit thinner just to give it a little bit of interest on the side Like that. This one kind of goes off to the side. All right. And I think I'm going to put one in, more in there, too. So a little bit more of this. I'm going to add a little bit of, of white to this one because it's going to sit back just a smidgen. Okay, so I'm going to put it right about here, I guess. And they're all different widths. Okay, so now we can do the side shoots. So I already started with that one, but 
Um, now, if they're a little bit uh, further away from you or up in the air a little bit, they get a little bit lighter. So we'll start off with this one here that we just painted. And we'll just put a little bit. Got a, shoot, a side shoot there, or a limb, I guess you could say. I'm not going to do a lot of different ones, but we'll do a few. And maybe this one I think I'm going to do dark. Right from this lump in there. That's a good way to put one in. And a lot of these trees, too, would have, hmm, I'm, I'm going to make this one here have some stems maybe coming down. I'm going to put a little bit of white along the um, bottom part of the tree. So let's put some little marks where some of the limbs maybe came up, or brushed off. They'd have these little knobby things. This gives them a little bit more character. And then we can also start putting in your side limbs, but make them a little bit lighter. I'm going to get a smaller brush even. Let's see. I'm going to take this. Um, this is a sword. It's got a nice point on it. And we can also take a Posca if you want to. And if you have the right color. And you can play with it. Just adjust your colors. So that they're um, noticeable. Over whatever uh, shade of brown that you're going across. So this one will show up on this one. I'll make that a little bit thicker. Like that. Then let's see. Let's we could just make all kinds of just to give it a little bit more interest. We'll make this one have a lot of side limbs. Maybe it's a, a younger tree, so it hasn't lost all its lower branches yet, like a lot of them do. And you can play with this as much as you want. Some people like really get into playing with the branches of trees. They're actually very interesting to paint. I want the girl in here too. So I don't want to put too many, but we can have from behind this tree. Maybe there's a tree that's growing behind here. Put some there. Don't forget to make some of them smaller. Maybe some of these have a few on the very top.
Okay. Uh, and then you can smaller lines yet. And just do a bunch coming across. Um, you can take your uh, script brushes to do that. Sometimes that's a little easier. You just have to play with the amount of water you put on your brush and paint. Just the right amount so your brush stays pointed. Um, and then you just wiggle. And those will be the smaller branches. can change up the color lighter as you go back. Could be some even smaller uh, saplings coming up sometimes. Just play with it. They're a lot of fun. You can make take a look at spooky trees and see how they. And there's usually a lot of crinkle or kinks in there. <laughs> Let's see. Maybe. Mm. Let's bring some across here, from there. A lot of times if you have a shaky hand, it works best. Let's go have a couple cups of coffee. <laughs> yeah. But it's fun. And you can just start playing with the um, trees closest to you. Now you could either just use a bunch of stiff brushes and dip them in different colors and dry brush over top. That's cool. I'll show you that. Uh, usually a nice stiff bristle brush works the best, like something like this. And if it's an older one, it's even better. Make sure it's dry when you use it because you don't want you don't want too much. On your brush, because then it won't be dry, like a dry brushed. Just. Thinking of the leaves, how they would go now. Put a few in those. You can also take a little bit of the darker and go back over if you one side. Now the sun's probably shining from here, so this side would be a little bit darker. So I could put a little bit more dark in there. Mm. 
You can do as much or as little as you want. This one here. as much but put some in there because it's right up in front of us so we'll see the bark a little bit more so we can put some of that in probably should have done that before I did all those branches but we can always go back and do a bunch of those branches again Have fun with it. You can use colored pencils with this too. I like mixed media, so I, I like to. Um, that's my favorite part, is when I get into the details. Now, you're not going to notice much in the far away. Um, trees so you don't have to worry about the details in them but the ones closest to you yeah so i'm just thinking of the sun that's shining on here might show a little bit just along the side here Thinking of the shape of the tree here. We can always go back with um, darker paints too and fix up stuff. Don't get too worried about how it's looking. All right. Now let's put on some leaves on the the ground. So basically, uh, you could take a deer foot stippler or a really scruffy, scruffy brush. Some people like using um, a fan brush. Um, let's see what I got here. Even these will work. This is just an old Home Depot <laughs> glue brush, I think they are. So I'm going to add some. Uh, cadmium cadmium uh, orange and some red and a little bit of gold or yeah I could use the yellow too and we're going to make some leaves oh, that's, that's shaking And mm, I'm going to use some straw paint. Dry brush. And I'm just going to dip my. And then just lightly. I'm not going to press down very hard, but just lightly. And you can just throw 
throw in some of these colors. We can always go back over the trees if you want. If you get some on the trees, don't worry about it. You can always go back over them. And you want most of the color um, down in the bottom part here. And then we'll just do um, a bit up top, but it gets more um, not as dotty looking. We get some of those in between the I'll probably go over some of this. Um, tree. Don't worry. Just want to keep doing it. As you're going up it's going to get less so you want it to go um, not quite as red but more on the goldy orange side as you get up here and then a little more on the yellowy side up in the very top area you can even add a little bit of um, white to that. Just mix, bring it down a little bit. orange then I'm going to take some of, I'm going to clean my brush then I'm going to take that brown colors again and make that muddy color again. And take out some of it. You don't want it to just on the end and then you can go back over the a few of the sections where she would be walking. So the path would have a kind of bare area, a little bit of a bare area. 
You can add a little bit of um, brown to it too because it would be um, kind of muddy some areas depending on if they had a little, a little bit of rain or just lightly. Can do all right now. While we have this brush out, we could do a few of the leaves. So more on the orangey gold side. You can put a little bit of red in it if you want. And then just here and there. Don't go crazy with it. Usually it's you'll see them on the more or less the ends of the uh, branches. So you can make them more dominant if you want. Um, it's up to you. I wouldn't do too many though. There. All right, so we'll let that dry. And while that's drying, we'll touch up some of those trees. <laughs> Do you have nice um, colors in your trees, Dot? You have sugar maples in that. Do you not? I'm just touching up over some of those limbs. You can leave some of the leaves on, or you could do um, hand select areas. Or maybe there are some, um, some leaves that are falling in the air. You could do that too. I'm going to put a little bit more dark in here. Underneath these limbs would be a little bit darker. Let's see. I'm just getting fussy with the um, closest ones, so adding a little bit of 
shadowing in here. And then maybe a little bit of highlight here and there. So we'd have a bit of a highlight on the edge of the tree from the sunlight. Might even be actually because it's low. Probably should be um, on the yellow side. So we could do that later, probably. And this one here, I'd have a little bit of shadow and highlight. Um, right around here. Just a little lighter. Just following the trunk. The edge of the trunk. Like that. Maybe a little on this one, right there. And I'm going to put a few wispy um, kind of brush, you know, weeds or whatever you want to call them. Sometimes you'd have saplings coming up. Put a few of those in. Overlap stuff. Just makes it look a little bit more realistic when you do that. You may not know what they are, but <laughs> it's fun. could use your um, Poscas too to do that. Some, a little bit of a lighter one. One here. 
I got some Let's dry that and then we'll put our girl on. We have our girl here. I think I'll put her right about there. Let's see where that, yeah, that should do it. I want her not too into the trees because the trees are dark. So this should work. It's there. So, yeah, I guess that will use. I'll see if this works or not. Okay. okay. And just outline. And as I said, the um, traceable for this is on the community page in YouTube membership or the Patreon page for everybody. And you can change it up however you want. You don't have to keep her as a witch. You could just remove the hat and make it uh, a girl. You could make it into um, Red Riding Hood. <laughs> you could have her with a Um, long hair if you wanted to. It's just a suggestion for you. She's walking, so you'll see the underneath of her shoe here. This is a shadow. Because she's facing the sunlight. Hopefully this worked. Sometimes this paper doesn't work very well. Let's see. Mm, not bad. The cat's kind of iffy. He's on the, I'm going to put the, get some white tracing paper. Mm -hmm. 
and put it under there. Trace him out in white. better not much but I can see it just keep your traceable handy so you can refer to it let's see put it up here smaller brush because I'm going to work in a smaller area. So I do have that. Oh, well, let's try the sword. I do have that out. And she's going to be very simple. So it's a black. So actually I need a black. Let's see. It's gray. Well, I've got a black green that should do it we'll see if not I'll have to get out some gesso black gesso Let's see if this is going to be so I want to just um, again uh, put in a base coat So I'm not worried about where the arms are. I'm, I'm going to go right over her braid, too. I just want her all coated in. So you have your traceable, so you should be able to figure out where everything is. Now she'll stand out a little bit better than if you were to use 
say the same color as the trees. So find either, this is green black, but you could use um, even a Payne's gray would have worked. It's a little bit of, um, Umber in it. That will give you a nice black. And then she's got a little <clears throat> bag that she's holding. Your shoes. Wow. <clears throat> your shoes. How did your shoes go? Okay, and then this one is kind of stepping sideways a little bit. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. All right, that's good. And then the little cat. I'm going to use a smaller brush and paint him in the same color. So, oh, he's hard to see. Let's see. Hmm. You well, know, I might have to. Had his tail there. Hmm, can't even see him. Oh, there's his paws. Okay, and he goes up like this. There's his other paw. I see him now. He's kind of hiding. And the tail goes up like that. And his ears there. There's his face. So he's kind of um, a silhouette right now. Once we put all the highlights on him, he look good. Oh, I forgot the little foot there. That. Hey, Joe. Well, we're doing a Halloween one. <laughs> but like I said, you don't have to. You could make her just as little red riding hood or a dress on a girl or whatever you want. So let's dry that and then we can do some highlighting and stuff.
all right i'm looking at it and i'm thinking eh, i think it needs more color so let's put some more leaves and stuff on here i think so um and i'm going to use a sponge this time now you don't have to if you like it the way it is that's great i want some color so i have these sponges these are the uh sea sponges and put a little bit of yellow with that okay and then i'm just gonna That one's too, too much. There. We're on the red side. And this. I'm going to make it darker. bit of darkness in the sides here, not the top. Okay. And there. Let's try that. Joe. You like cane trees, Carol? It's fun. All right. Now, um, we could actually go into even bigger um, areas of uh, Of leaves. So if it's closer, see she's gone by this area here. So this area would be a little bit more. Get 
could actually form some more prominent looking leaf, I guess you could say. Sometimes they're a little bit difficult to do though. These ones. Maybe even a few falling. Why not? Okay. Now. For her, we're going to put a little bit of a um, white in first for her, her uh, braid that she has. So just using a smaller. And so it was kind of like. Like that. And then we'll just go back in once that's dry and add a color to it. And we need a little bit, where is my, here it is, a grayish color for some folds in her, um, let's see, I've got my, the color of, paint that I used to paint her in, I just want to lighten that with a bit of white. And then find out where her fold, the folds are. So there's one fold here. There won't be a lot of, of um, color, but there will be some color difference. So Let's see white Just along the edge would be lighter because she's facing the sun. So you kind of have a, a bit of a glow on her um, shoulders and, <coughs> excuse me, where her um, arm is. The white right in here where her her arm is and then there's that little you could do this with colored pencils too don't have to use the 
paint. Just over her shoulder a little bit, how much? That's her the back of her. And her hat, same thing. So you'd have a little bit of a just along the edge. And right about here. There's a bit of a she has kind of a ribbon, but it's darker. Let's see. Get in that black. Some touch-ups here. Um, on her shoes, they wouldn't be showing that much. You could put probably put a little bit on the top part of the heel there, just to show that she's walking. Like that. Um. I didn't put her purse in. You could have her holding a bag. It's up to you. Doesn't matter. Now the cat, mm, there's not a whole lot. You can. There's a little bit of a white area where his legs are right there. And there's a smidgen of, of highlighting around his fur, but you could use a white um, colored pencil for that. It's a little easier. I'm just going to sharpen this. You want a really good sharp point. So I've got something in it. And then we'll do the Have a little bit around his tail, so just a very fine edge. Um, that'll show the difference from his. Uh, inside of his ear, I guess, and then his his eyeball. Wow. 
know if his eyes there or not. Doesn't look right to me. Hmm. Actually, I think that should be up. I'm going to change it because I can. Let's see. That black green, where did I put it? Oh, there it is. I'm going to change the ear. <laughs> it's bugging me. I'm going to have him more or less looking forward a little bit. going to have some big ears. There. All right, like that. And then we can also paint in her hair. And you can have her hair whatever color you want. Um, I'm just going to do it kind of in a goldy brown color. And then I can just go in with a uh, colored pencil. And um, finish that. So let's dry that. Now, I forgot to put her shadow in. So let's use the green, the black green that I had for her. And a bit of water on my brush. And the shadow. Basically, like that. Okay, so that's good. All right, so now I'm going to use a little bit of, of uh, yellow colored pencil. And it, because there's yellow, the sky's more yellow, uh, I'm going to put a little bit of yellow highlight down on the uh, arms here. So it would be more of a glow from the sun. That would be coming off of her. And you could do the same with the cat too. Like 
that. And then even the trees would have a little bit of that um, glow. The hat too. So along the edges of the trees, you could put a little bit of colored pencil. Just to, I would just do the ones that are closest to the opening here that would be facing the uh, tree, or not tree, the sky. You can just put a little bit in there. So that was That's where you would see that highlight being cast. And it's low, so you're going to get it on the bottom of some of these branches also. So you can do some of them. Just fun, a fun little thing you can add. If you like your painting the way it is, don't don't put it in. Just play with what you want to do. Now I'm gonna probably put some highlights in the tree branches too with some white just to brighten them up a little bit I can also add more through this here uh, maybe they need to be I don't know more Could be a certain type of tree. Maybe the branches are light. Some yellow on this one. white too. You do as much or as little as you want. If you're just starting out, sometimes this is a little scary to do. Um, so, you know, put it away for a while, then come back to it. Sometimes that's a better way of going about doing that. Uh, let's take a... Black Posca, maybe. Let's see. Running out of space. Do I have one in there? Okay. So we'll put maybe a few. stems might see some some stems but not all of them and you put a few of these in it just helps I 
this could be from a bigger tree over here. You're just seeing bits and pieces through the uh, leaf areas. I could put some more. You just have to do what feels right. This is where you um, can experiment and have fun with it. And I'm just going to add some gold to her hair a little bit. And okay, that looks about right. Yeah, dogs are up. Hear them wimping. All right. I think that's good. Oh, yeah. I was going to, I'm just going to put a little dab right there. I could put, actually, if you have a fine pen, you could put whiskers, but it doesn't really need it. All right, there we go. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you'll give uh, yours a try. This is um, downloadable, so it's for everybody in the memberships, Patreon, and the uh, YouTube membership. And I guess I should sign it. Today is the 13th, so there we go. So there's our fall slash <laughs> picture. So it's fun. I did mine ATC. I will post in Facebook. Awesome. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, they're fun. I like doing them. They're a lot of fun. So I hope you uh, will give it a try and see what you can do with it. Play with it. See, you could add things. You could put pumpkins in here or crows or whatever. But just have fun with it. All right, so have a fantastic weekend, and we'll see you on Tuesday, and uh, get your sketchbook out. Do some sketching, painting, just be creative. It'll uh, lower your levels for anxiety and stress. Have a good one, everyone. Thanks for coming. Bye for now.